So many of us go through life wanting more, believing if we just had more stuff, more things, more money, then we'd be happy. The problem is, we don't realize that what we have isn't who we are. Instead of trying to get rich, we must realize that we already are rich. So with God's help, it's time to be rich in what matters most. Good morning, church. God is good. Amen. And all the time? Wow. Wow, that is true. Excellent. What a good day. Man, it is cold up here right now because I am soaking wet again, and that is a good thing. Amen? And so let's preach wet every week if we can. That would be awesome because that just means God is at work in our church, and he is transforming lives, which I am excited about. Well, this, this morning we are, are starting a brand new series. In case you haven't seen it as you come in, it's called Being Rich in What Matters Most. And so as we start the series on being rich, a couple things I want to go over before we jump into being rich in what matters most. First of all, I just want to take a moment as a church and celebrate Wednesday night. That if you were here, it was amazing. If you weren't here, you missed out, I'm sorry to say. But the good news is there's another Wednesday night this week. We had about 185 people at dinner on Wednesday night. It's all free and fellowshipping and God's word together and then going to Bible studies. It was just an amazing night on Wednesday night. If you're here, say amen. 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 So we want to invite everyone to come this Wednesday night. If you've got friends or families or neighbors who are just looking for a good time and free food, come on down on Wednesday night and uh, just fellowship with us. Also, um, um, let me read my notes here. I can't read my own handwriting. That's pretty sad. Oh, yeah. You may have noticed today as you came in, there was a bulletin that was handed out. And so if you open it up to the very first page, you'll see something there. It's a communication card. If you're a guest with us today, we ask that you take a moment, just fill that out. Later at the end of our service, we're going to pass an offering plate. If you'll just drop this card, we'd love to connect with you and get you some more information about our church. That just rips right off. So you could just rip that right off, fill it out, and put it in the offering plate later in our service. On the back of it, if you have any prayer requests, please feel free to share your prayer requests. Our staff meets every morning at 10 a.m. to pray over the prayer requests of the church. And so we'd love to pray for you as well. Also, on the next page is notes for the sermon, so if you'd like to follow along, please do so as well. If you uh, use an electronic version of the Bible or electronic device, you can actually download the Bible app and go to events on the Bible app, and you'll have this on the Bible app as well, and you can walk right through our notes on the Bible app. Um, so today, we're going to be jumping into being rich in what matters most in life, and we're going to be coming out of 1 Timothy chapter 6, but I got a couple of questions before we jump into that. Um, how many of you, by a show of hands, how many of you when you were kids, younger, dreamed and hoped about being rich when you grew up? Let's be honest. How many of you are dreaming about that right now? Okay, let's, that's good. That's good. Um, I hope you someday you do become rich. The, uh, when I was a kid, I went to school and I got invited to a birthday party when I was in elementary school. And I went to this birthday party and it was pretty awesome. They had an indoor swimming pool. And I thought to myself, wow, this is what it's like to be rich. You got an indoor swimming pool. Today as an adult, I think, why do you need an indoor swimming pool in Phoenix? <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. But they did when I was a kid. And I thought to myself, this is what it's like to be rich. You see something and your mind gets programmed and this is what rich is. So, okay, so with that in mind, we all would like, we, all, we can all admit at some point we've dreamed about what we would do if we are rich. Okay, second question. Do you know somebody that's rich? Do you know somebody that's rich? Let's go ahead, point to them right... Just kidding, don't point to them. That would be awkward. That would be awkward. Do you know somebody that's rich? Have you seen them live their life richly? And have you maybe secretly, if we can be honest, let's just be honest right now, let's be transparent because we're family, right? Thought, wow, they're rich, but if I had their money, I'd be better at being rich. I'd spend it different. I wouldn't waste it like that. I'd spend it like this. How many of us, if we're honest, let's just be honest. I'm not alone, am I? Okay, here we go. Okay, got to look at Pastor. He's got an evil heart. All right. Um, so, okay, so I got one more question, and let's be completely honest. How many of you in here by a show of hands are absolutely filthy, mega rich right now? Anybody? Right here? We need to pass the offering plate in this section a couple of times today. All right, right over here. Filthy, mega rich right now. The truth is, a lot of people are very, very rich and they don't even know it. 
They don't even know it. And I'm not even talking, it's very easy as a pastor to get spiritual on this and go, you know, they've got God in their life. They're, they've got salvation, which is true, and that we're very rich in that family and friends. We're very, no, I'm talking about money. Can we just talk about money? Say money. money. There's a lot of people who are very, very rich money-wise and don't even know it. And I think that is because we don't understand what rich is. In fact, when we think about rich, we think about it in terms of our life. When I first got married 16 and a half years ago, we had no kids. And I thought to myself, if we could just make thirty to $35,000, we would be rich. <laughs> right? Like that, we would be, we'd have spending money, we'd have cars, we'd have houses. Like, that's pretty immature of a young person who got married, but that's how I thought. And so then a kid came, and then another kid came, and then another kid came. And I realized, wow, $35,000, if we could just have like $35 million, <laughs> we'd be rich, right? And so, but the truth is, when we think about being rich, none of us wake up one day on payday and go, wow, oh my gosh, today is the day. Yesterday I wasn't, but now that I got this paycheck, I have crossed the line and now I am rich. Woohoo! Right? Like I can afford anything. I that doesn't happen. We have an idea in our mind because we've been programmed by what our culture says rich looks like, and we have an idea in our mind, but then when we get to that place, we realize this isn't even close to being rich, and so the line moves, and then when you get to the next line, the line moves again. So the idea of being rich is a moving target. It's a moving target. We don't ever actually achieve it because when you land there, you wake up the next morning, and you don't feel rich. And so as we take a look at this, I think the reason is we've been programmed to think that rich is something that it's not. That we've bought into the lies that our culture has told us that rich is something that is absolutely vacant of truth and it looks like something that is a complete lie. So I've done my best in research to try and portray when we begin to get programmed, usually as starts as children, by what culture says what rich looks like. So I've tried to hit every generation. So I've got some pictures. Let's see if you guys recognize this. I believe this was the beginning of some of our programming of what rich looks like. So let's take a look here. Does anybody recognize this picture? <laughs> Richie Rich. If you do, you're showing your age, right? Richie Rich was a comic strip back when, I don't know, before I was alive. Um, <laughs> but it was a cartoon when I was a kid. It was about this little rich kid. And this is what being rich kind of programs that are right. Mom tells us we can have whatever we want. We've got a maid and a butler with some kind of strawberry root beer flow. I don't know. But it says all taken care of. That's what our idea, like if I could live like this on, a, on a, a chair by the beach and have somebody bring me drinks all day long, that's being rich, right? So for my generation, I grew up in the 80s. This is what the picture of being rich was. Some, tell me if you recognize this. There it is. Silver spoons. Ricky Schroeder when he was a little kid. Anybody remember this show? Okay, this is my generation's idea of being rich. This kid had an arcade in his house. Not video game systems. The, the, generation, the generation of today, they don't understand what a real arcade is. Like, this kid had a real arcade, the arcade games and everything. You can go in there and play Donkey Kong Jr. and Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. He had in his house, and that was our idea of, like, that's what it looks like to be rich, be able to do and buy whatever you want. Well, another generation, the 90s hits, and this is maybe what it looks like. Some of you guys may recognize this picture. Scrooge McDuck and DuckTales. And he gave us a picture of having a vault that was bigger than his house that he would go in every day, put a swimsuit on, and swim through the gold, right? That's what being rich looked like in the early 90s, right? And so, but here, here's one that, that, that surpasses all generations. We all recognize this one. Take a look at this. What's that? Monopoly man, right? And here's the deal. This is the picture of American richness. Like, let's get as much fun money as we can, run as fast as we can, take the money and run and get more, right? And in America, we've learned a valuable lesson, though, because a lot of the times, if this is how you live life, then this is how you end up, right? <laughs> right? And so you get to go to jail because you took somebody else's money, and we've seen that in the history of America. But as we look at all of this, I've realized we've been programmed to think rich is a certain thing or a certain achievement, and the world programs us to think that rich is based on the things that we don't have, right? So as we continue to take a look at this, my desire over the next five weeks as we go through this series, my desire is for us as a church and as individuals to wake up one morning during the next five weeks and realize We've crossed the rich line. 
Like for us to wake up one morning and go, hold on, I am rich. I'm rich. So what we're going to do, I think, is we have to actually ignore the lies of culture and actually determine what rich really looks like. But to do that, we have to go to God's word. And so that's our desire. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. If you are um, using one of the Bibles in the, in the seat in front of you, it's actually on page 187 in the upper right-hand corner. You can open that Bible right up to one, page 187, and it's going to start in the very first line in the upper right-hand corner. Will you stand with us as we look at God's word this morning? Verse 17. This is what it says. Here we go. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you right now. We know you're in this place. We know your spirit's here, God. So we pray as we look at your word, God, that it becomes a mirror to our heart to show us a reflection of, the, of your word, that you're able to, to set a seed in our heart to grow in your word and to show us truth today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So as we look at the word of God here, I love this passage in 1 Timothy. What we need to know, this is the Apostle Paul, the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. He's writing a letter to a guy named Timothy. Timothy was his protege. He was a guy that Paul trained up, as a, started as a kid, and trained him up to become a pastor of a church. So he's writing the letter of Timothy to Timothy to encourage him on how to be a pastor of this church that Paul has left him at. And these are some of the final words that Paul is telling to Timothy. He's saying, hey, tell those who are, what's the word? Rich. Everybody say rich. Tell those who are rich. So we know right away that Timothy had some rich people in his church, right? Timothy had some rich people in his church. So Paul is telling them, and he says, do not be arrogant. Everybody say arrogant. arrogant. Do not be arrogant. So Paul's telling Timothy, hey, tell those rich people, you know who they are, don't be arrogant. This is what arrogance looks like when you're rich. You may have worked hard all of your life. You may have put in the hours even when you were sick. You may have invested wisely. You may have done everything right, and today you set rich. And arrogance comes into play when you take credit for it. Because the truth is, God's the one who placed you into this life, and he's blessed you with all of those things. When God is in control of life, the truth is every single one of us, God has ordained to live in America, the freest country on earth. That's not our choice, is it? We can't take credit for that. God has given us the life that we have based on the choices, the choices we make. He has directed us. And the arrogance of our life is when we are doing so well, we think that God has nothing to do with it, that I've achieved it myself. And we ignore the blessings that God has given us through our life to direct us to this point. That's arrogance. Paul's telling Timothy, tell those rich people not to think they got there by themselves. To realize my hand has been the one that's at work that's directed them there. So that's what arrogance looks like for all of us, whether it's relationships, finances, work. Arrogance is when we don't give praise to God for the blessings that he has given us. Any blessing that we have from God that we do not turn back to praise becomes arrogance and pride. Anything that we have that is good, because the word tells us all good things come from God. Anything that we have that is good, that we take full credit for, is arrogance and pride. When we don't turn around and give God the praise and the thanks for what he has blessed us with, that is arrogance and pride. So we know, first of all, Paul's telling him, tell those rich people, don't be arrogant. Nor to put their hope in what? What is it? Wealth. Everybody say wealth. wealth. Rich people, don't be arrogant. And don't put your hope in wealth. So where should we put our help? He says, put your hope in God, who richly provides us with 
everything. Say everything. everything. For our enjoyment. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. God, God's not against us having nice things. And I want to, I want to, I'm just going to draw a line right here and kind of step out of the sermon for a second. I want to be, bring something very clear. We are not talking about a prosperity gospel. We're not talking about a God that wants you to be rich, to be richer, to be richer, to be richer. We're not, God does not exist to put money in your checking account. Do not send any money to any guy on TV that says, if you send me $500, God's going to turn it into $5,000. That's snake oil. That's not what God's about. That's not what God's about. God is about blessing you so that you can live in him. It's not about becoming rich. Today we're trying to learn, as I step back into this sermon, we're trying to learn how to be rich at what matters most. So, as we continue. So, he says here, verse 18, command them to do, what are, they, what are rich people supposed to do? Good. To be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. That's in heaven. You'll, learn up tre- you'll lay up treasures in heaven, not on earth. And this is the most important part of it. So that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. I can tell you right now, chasing riches and the life you think it's going to bring will never bring you real life. Chasing money and the life you think it's going to bring will never bring you real life. Because remember, you always will be let down. As soon as you get to where you think you need to be, your next step is you realize you're not rich and you need more. So today, for us to continue, I think it is very, uh, it's a necessity for us to move forward. We know Timothy had rich people in his church. The question is, what is it to be Rich, Because I think we need to identify what it is for us so we know if we have rich people in our church. And so we need to go to the word of God, not to what the culture says is rich, but we need to go to the word of God and to see what is rich. We need to step out of the lies and into reality. And so today we're going to examine as we answer this question because we want to be rich in what matters most, who is rich among us. So let's take a look at this just out of um, reality. Let's do a reality check here. Gallup, uh, it's, a, it's a polling agency. They do a lot of research. They sat down and they polled a bunch of Americans who make about $30,000. And there's many of us today here who make about $30,000. And they asked the people who make $30,000, what would it take for you to consider yourself rich? What kind of income would you need to be rich? And you know what people who said the, the overwhelming average of people who have made $30,000? If we could make $54,000, we'd be rich. Okay, that's almost double what they were making. So Gallup said, well, let's go to the next step. Let's ask people who make 50,000, because I guarantee if you make $54,000 in here right now, I don't want to know, but if you do, you you want to sit down with the $30,000 people and go, no, we're not rich, trust me. Like, we're the farthest thing from rich. So they asked the $50,000 people, if you make $50,000, what does it take for you to be rich? And the common response was $100,000. If we were $100,000 in income every year, We'd be rich. We'd have the houses. We call this, this is an American achievement. We call this the six-figure income. Like even in America, we realize if we hit a six-figure income, then we're doing well. And so $50,000 people said if we can make $100,000, we would be rich. So Gallup went to the, another section of people and said, all right, those of you that make $200,000, those of you that make $200,000, what would it take for you to be rich? If we made, a lot of us in this room, if we made $200,000, we'd be okay with that, right? We'd be like, I'm doing well. So they asked the $200,000 people, they said, what would it take for you to be rich? And you know what they said? $5 million. And all of us go, duh. Like, that's a stupid, that's a, that's a stupid question. Of course, if anybody in here had $5 million, we'd be well, right? And so this is what happens. This is the chasing. These are the lies. And the truth is the $54,000 person wants to say, no, no, $30,000, we are not rich. And the $100,000 person wants to tell the $54,000 person, no, no, we're not rich. We're not rich. That's not what rich looks like. And so if we understand, the challenge for this is we don't feel rich. We can try, if we don't feel rich, we, can try, we continue to try and get rich. Because when we hit each level, we try to get richer and richer and richer. And then one day we actually pass the rich line, and we never know it, and we're living like we're broke. 
Right now, if you sit down with somebody who makes $200,000 and ask them if they're rich, you'll probably say no. Why not? Because those people over there, look what they've got. They're rich. I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that kind of house. I don't have that kind of car. I'm not rich. I only make $200,000. They've passed the line and didn't even know it. So let's take a look at what being rich actually is as we, we dive into this. And um, we need to reprogram. And so let's start with some good news and some bad news today. Good news and bad news. Now, I know there's different types of people who like the good news first and the bad news first. So who likes, who likes good news first? Okay. Who likes bad news first? All right. More people. That's weird. His first service was the same way. The bad news people like to go first. Well, unfortunately, I wrote the notes good news first. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, good news first. Now, here's the deal with this good news. I'm going to share with you probably the best news you've heard in a long time. This is really good news. And if you truly begin to believe it, not only will this be the, some of the best news you've ever had in your life, this will transform your life. It will change the way you live. It will change your heart and transform your heart. It will change the way that you walk through the office. It will change everything about you if you actually believe this good news. I believe this good news to be 100% true. So here is the good news. Are you guys ready? You want some good news? Say yes. yes. Here's the good news. You are rich. You're rich, and you're rich, and you're rich, and you're rich. We are all rich. And then everybody goes, you have not seen my checking account, right? No, 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 you are rich. And we're going to kind of talk through this a little bit so that we can understand, not by what culture says is rich by money, but what we understand is rich. And this is how I know you're rich. You guys ready? You have rich people opportunities. You have rich people opportunities. You have children, you get to choose what kind of education they have. You've got a library you can take them to. You've got a smartphone with internet anywhere you go. You can play Pokemon on top of a mountain. You're rich. You are rich. You've got opportunities that the rest of the world does not have. I'm not talking about whether you have a bank account full of a million dollars or it's $30 in the negative right now. I'm not talking about money I'm talking about the fact that you're rich because you have rich people opportunities. And you push back, you know, that may be true, but you don't see the bills that I have, you know, this and that and this. I'm gonna, we're just going to pull some reality out right now. Okay, you guys ready? If you make $33,000 a year, $33,000 a year, if your home brings in $33,000 a year, you make more than 99% of the world. You are the 1%. Think about that. You are the 1%, $33,000 a year. So that's, there's, there's many of us in here that make $33,000. There's some of us that make a little bit more. So I want to just kind of throw this out there even more. If your family brings home $80,000 a year, $80,000 a year, if your family brings home $80,000 a year, you are in the one-tenth percentile. You are 0.1%. You make more money, your family has more money than 99.9% .9 of the rest of the world. Let's start to bring rich into reality. It's not about what you don't have that the neighbors have. What do you already have that God has blessed you with? Being rich in what matters most. This blows my mind. $80,000, you are point one, one tenth of a percent more than the rest of the world. And I want to be very careful right here, and I want to be very sensitive, because there's many of us who have had doctor's bills and health bills that have been racked up by things that we didn't expect. So there's a huge debt there that we feel like we may never get under. Some of us have been laid off from work, and finances are a struggle right now. We have issues in our life where finances is a challenge. I get that, and I'm sensitive to that. I'm not talking about that what I want us to do is kind of pull the curtains back a little bit and really look at the truth of rich. That even in our struggles and even in the hard times, we are rich. And so if we look at the rest of the world, half of the world, let's say three billion people. Three billion people, this is how they, they would say, if, if I were to ask you, how do, how do you, what is somebody that's rich, what does it look like, you'd give me a description. If you were to go to half the world and say, what does it look like for somebody to be rich, it's a very simple answer. You know what it is? They have a car. 
They have a car. Rich people have cars. Okay? Some rich people are so rich that they have two cars. One for him and one for her. That's pretty awesome, right? That's a blessing. Some of these people are so rich, they've built houses for their cars and call them garages. <laughs> right? Call them garages. And they protect the cars from the weather that the rest of the world has to live in. Some of these people are so rich, they've actually built a house that would fit three cars. Two of them for their cars, one of them for all the junk that they can't fit in their own house. <laughs> right? And these people get in these fancy cars, and they drive all the way across town, passing store after restaurant after store to eat at their favorite restaurant to pay somebody to make their favorite meal that they can make at home for a tenth of the price and then tip them for doing it. Then they drive home, and they go into their house, and they've got these rooms in these houses that are amazing. They're like mansions for clothes. They're called closets. And you walk into this closet, and some of them are so nice. Some of these people are so rich. It's like a two-level home for clothes. There's a row of clothes right here and a row of clothes up here, and then a wall of shoes. And let me tell you, these rich people are so rich, they could spend hours in there looking at everything they have and then come out and say, I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> We're rich if we think right. And if we begin to understand what it is to be rich, it changes everything about us. And we begin to and still understand. There's pushback here. Jeremiah, you don't understand the bills. No, I know, I know what you're talking about. I've got bills. It's in, it's even in the hardest times, it's, we are still rich. Still rich. And the truth is, the reason we never feel rich is because we consume all that God gives us. And there's never anything left. We consume it all. God blesses us richly. And we're like, great, God, I just ate it all. And then it's gone. I'm, I don't feel rich. God, I don't have. And God has to bless us more and more and more. And if you ask this world, I mean, this is, they call us the fat rich because if you ask them, these three billion people, what does it look like to be rich? It's like these people over here, they go to a restaurant and they pay for three meals for one person. The first one they call an appetizer. And it's to get them hungry for the second meal. Could you believe that? And so they eat the main course, which is the second meal, and they're full on the main course, and they can't eat anymore, so they don't eat at all, right? Because they don't want to gouge themselves, or they just can't take another bite. But then they order a third meal, even though they're full, called dessert. And they eat more than they need. They're fat rich. That, that describes some of us. Um, so here's, this is the truth. We, if we start to pull out of the lies and understand reality, we are rich, but we have to understand this means we have to own this, and we have to believe this, and we have to internalize this. So in your notes right there, you will see something, and this is what the note says. God has given me more than I need. God has given me more than I need. I'm rich. What has God given me? More. He's blessed me with more. Therefore, everybody say, I'm rich. I'm rich. If we're honest, even if we're financially in trouble right now, we still have more than we need. We still have more than we need. We are rich. Say, everybody, I'm rich. I'm rich. When we start to understand this, this changes how we look at life. It changes who we are. It changes our generosity because we no longer go, I can't give because I don't have. We go, I'm going to give because I am rich. I'm not going to do that because I can't afford it. God's telling me to do this. I'm not going to do that. No, God's given to you, made you rich so you can do that. It changes everything about how we think and how we process through life. So everybody say, I'm rich. I'm All right, let's make it a church thing. We are rich. Ready? We are rich. And when our church starts to live like we are rich, we will change the community and the city and the world around us because that's what rich people who live richly do. They invest in the world around them. We invest in our communities, in our schools, in our homes so that people around us can come to know God. That's what being rich is all about. So I told you earlier 
I told you earlier, we're going to do good news and bad news. The good news is you're rich. Congratulations. So am I. And it feels good. The bad news, and this is really bad news. This is really, this may be the worst news you could hear spiritually. This is such a challenge in our lives. This will be one of the biggest challenges we ever have to overcome, spiritually, physically, monetarily. Are you guys ready for the bad news? Brace yourselves. This is what it is. Are you ready? The bad news is you're rich. You're rich. Because I know you're rich because you have rich people opportunities. The bad, pro- the b- bad news is because you're rich, you now have rich people problems. And I'm going to talk specifically about spiritual problems. And here's what it comes down to. There's three things I want to point out. There's many problems that come, but there's three that I want to point out today. The very first one is if you're rich, it's harder for you to depend on God. It's harder for you to depend on God. We are the 1% of the world. It's harder for us to depend on God. You know why? Because we don't have to. When Jesus taught us how to pray in, in Matthew... He said, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus says, ask every day for God to provide for you. Most of us have never been in a situation where we needed God to provide for us that day or we weren't going to eat. There's not a need for the dependency there. And we are blessed, we are rich, we are doing well. And the truth is, even when times are tough, there's still things other than God that we can depend on that are easier to depend on. And you can depend on the government because they could bring you a food box or they can give you food stamps. The government's there to help. And so we depend on the government. You may be depending on family. If you get in a hard time, family's always there for you to help. So your first instinct is to go to family instead of God. When we have rich people, when we're rich and we have rich people problems, it's harder for us to depend on God. In my home, it's in ramen do we trust. Whenever times get tough, we always got ramen, right? So it's not a hard thing. So for us to be in a situation where we have to completely depend on God, is a rarity for us in America. I was talking to my dad this week, and he was telling me about one of the mission trips he took to Africa. And he met this young guy who had traveled two days to be at the conference he was at. The first day, he walked all day to get to a bus so he could ride a bus all day to get to the conference. And my dad's talking to him, and he says, what do you do for a living? And this guy says, well, I'm a peasant. Okay, I don't, we don't know what that means in America. So he says, okay, what do you mean you're a peasant? He's like, well, I don't have a job. All I have is this little piece of land, and we farm this to feed our family. Okay, what do you mean? He's like, well, how big is it? It's it's about half an acre, and we were able to grow just enough to feed our family. And my dad said something in that moment that, that sat with me all week. He said, I realized in that moment, in Tanzania, in the middle of Africa, talking to this young man, I have more put money in my pocket than he will ever see in his life. I have more money in my pocket than he will ever see in his life. And this guy knows what it is to depend on God. This guy knows what it is. He was so hungry to grow in what God had for him, he walked for a day and then rode a bus for a day to get to this conference to learn more about God. And it's interesting. We get jealous. Honestly, if we go to a third world country or a developing country and we see people who are completely dependent on God, the Christianity in us, the spirituality in us gets jealous. Like, how are you able to do that? Because there's no other option for them. When we're rich people, we got rich people opportunities, which means that we don't have to depend on God as much. So it's a struggle for us to truly get our knees and trust God. Our second issue that we, we have a problem with is it distracts us from our true priorities. Rich people problems distract us from our true priorities. Being rich distracts us from our true priorities. And I'm going to say some things here that are going to sting a little bit because they sting me. And so here's the deal. Rich people have problems that distract them from their own priorities. As believers and Christians in Christ, every single one of us in here could agree that one of the biggest priorities we have as believers is that we come together to worship and to praise God together and to fellowship together. What we do right now in this hour on Sunday mornings is a top priority. If you believe that, say amen. 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 The problem is we have rich people opportunities, which means that a lot of us only make it once a month because we have money to do other things. Our richness robs us from our true priorities. This is going to sting. I'm going to just be honest with you. Many of us have money to go spend three Sundays on on the lake, on our boat, every month. And the blessings that God has given us has robbed us from the priorities that we need to have as Christians. This, This rums deep with me. 
This runs deep with me. Many of us have the ability to go up to the cabin or go to fishing or go hunting or, this is going to hurt, buy Cardinal season tickets. <laughs> and the priority changes. And I'm guilty of that. Guilty of that. The rich person opportunity, something that I enjoy, that God's given to me to enjoy, I've let overrun the true priorities. Let's apply this to your house. We got so many rich opportunities in our homes for our families and for our kids, running them to music rehearsals, to practices, to sports, to, to, to uh, lessons, to tutoring. And all of a sudden, we get to Friday and realize we haven't had dinner with our family one night this week. All the stuff that's a blessing that we can afford for our families to do has robbed us of the one priority, and that's being our family together in our homes. Rich people opportunities make it hard for us to be real to the priorities that we should have in our homes and in our walks. The third one, and this one may be a little bit harder because it might hit your wallet. <clears throat> Do you have a greater responsibility as a Christian once you realize you're rich? You have a greater responsibility as a Christian once you realize you're rich. Let's go back and let's see what, what it said here in 1 Timothy. You ready? Verse 18 Command them, who are we talking about? The rich people, and the rich people are you and me, right? Command them to do what? Oh, man, some of us, were like, we're still dealing with the Cardinals tickets, aren't we? All right, <clears throat> let's catch up. I'm telling you, I've struggled with this all week. Some of them, okay, command them to do good, not to get richer. Command them to do good and to be rich in good deeds. And then to what? Share. Here's the truth. Remember I talked about we don't ever feel rich because we consume everything? God never designed it that way. God designed us to be able to be rich so that we can have enjoyment and things that we like. Remember, God wants us to have things. He wants us to do, enjoy things. But when we consume it, it becomes arrogance. God gives us richness and enjoyment so that we can be doing good works and good deeds to share with those who don't know Christ so that they can come to know Christ. Because when rich people are good at being rich at what matters most, they change the world. That's what we're called to do. And so hey, this is hard for us to understand. You see, in the New Testament, in, in the book of Mark, there's a young guy who comes to Jesus. And he's rich. In fact, he's a ruler. And he's got a lot of power and he's got a lot of money. And he tells Jesus, ask Jesus, he goes, I know you're God and I know that you have eternal life. So what do I need to do to get it? And Jesus looks at him and says, ah, you know, you're not really serious. You know what? Just follow the Ten Commandments. And this rich guy goes, no, no, I've been doing that all my whole life. I know there is more. And Jesus says, okay. And it says in Mark, it tells us Jesus looked at him with love and said, this is the only place in the Bible this is ever said. This is the only story that addresses this. And Jesus says, go sell everything you have and give it away. Go sell everything you have and give it away. And the rich young guy looked at him, knowing that Jesus had eternal life. And scripture tells us he walked away sad because his things were more important. His wealth was more important. See, Jesus addressed a heart issue in this young man that we need to understand in our lives. I don't believe he's asking us to go and get, sell everything and give it all away. What he's telling us is, I don't have a problem with you having things that you enjoy. In fact, I'm going to give you things for you to enjoy. What I have a problem with is when the things have you. And when those come between you and God. When the things of this earth have such a grip on you that you're unwilling to turn to God. That's a problem. And then he goes on to say this. Listen. Luke 18 says this. How hard is it for the, what's it say? Rich. rich. Who's rich? Raise your hand. That's us. How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The blessings that he gives us can become a curse if we don't turn it back into praise. Remember? How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And that is because our things and the blessings that we have become arrogant about and we don't give thanks to God for has become between us and God. 
And so I tell you, I get excited about this message because I dream about what a church looks, at, looks like that's unleashed when they realize they're rich. I dream about what it would look like for us at South Peoria to live like we're rich, to be rich at what matters most. And this says so that we could grasp life that is truly life and bring that to the world and bring that to the world. It's, it's exciting to me to think what our families look like if they live like they're rich. This excites me to think about what our church looks like and how we can change the world. Because if we live like we're rich, finances are no longer chains, are they? Because who's the one that gives us the richness? It's a gift from God. It's what Ecclesiastes says with Solomon. Check this out. This is awesome. Solomon says this. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions because God's the one that gives it, and the ability to enjoy them. Do you hear that? He gives you the gift and gives you the ability to enjoy them because you should not be ashamed for what God gives you. When he gives you the gift and the ability to enjoy it, it's a gift from God. And that gift is for you to enjoy and to turn around and to bless others. And we can unleash this power in our church if we learn what being rich really is and we learn what it is to be rich in what matters most. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you right now. We've dealt with some heavy issues, and anytime we talk about money, it can get a little sticky. We talk about heart issues, God, and we talked about the truth of realizing what it is to be rich and to realign priorities with you, what it means for us to be a Christian and what it means for us to realize what it is to be rich. So God, I pray right now as we come into your house today that we, we take what's been shown in your word, we apply it to our lives, we apply it to our heart. God, and we give your permission to examine our hearts. We give you permission to examine our hearts and to show us the things that need to change. So these next few moments, God, may this bring honor and glory to you. As we continue to pray this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed. I've got a couple questions I just want to ask here just real quick. If you're here this morning and you're struggling with the idea, even the concept based on what we've talked about this morning, that you are rich, that that is something that you're not ready or you're not able or you're, not, you're just having a hard time struggling with that and you want to be able to know what it is to be rich, I want to be able to pray for you that God reveals that, and not just with richness in your life, but that you become good at what matters most. So if, if you need prayer for that, if you want to be able to break those chains in understanding what rich is, will you, nobody's looking around right now, will you raise your hand so that I can pray for you? If you're here this morning, thank you, I see you, thank you. If you're here this morning and you realize you're rich, you realize you're blessed, not by the standards of culture, but by the standards of we know that what comes from God is what makes us rich. If you're here this morning, but you have a hard time being good at it, of letting go of the control of it, if that's you here today and you need help from God in order to release the control of what being rich is in your life, I want to pray for you. Will you raise your hand right now so I can see it? Okay, thank you. I see you. I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? There we go. Thank you. Yep. See you right up front here. I'm going to pray for all those that have raised their hand right here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you right now. God, I pray first for those who are struggling with the understanding of, of richness in their life. God, I pray for these chains to be broken, that for, for them to wake up and see the truth that they are blessed, even if there's a struggle financially, God, to see the richness and the goodness that you have given them. God, I pray for those that raise their hand that have seen your goodness, that understand the richness in their lives, God, but they're straining to live in that richness. They're straining to be good at what matters most. They're straining to be exactly, to do the good, to do the good deeds, to give away, to live in purpose for you. God, I pray right now for your spirit to empower them, to begin to break those chains, God, and that they live generously, that they live richly, that they live wisely. As we continue to pray this morning. I've got one, one, more, one more question. There's those of you here today that you struggle with your things. There's those of you here today 
that your things are the battle between you and God. And just like this rich young ruler, you've been fighting it for a long time. It may be your first time in church today. You may have been coming to church your whole life. But the truth is you've never experienced what it is to give control to God, to accept the free gift of Christ into your life. And your prayer this morning would be something like this. That would be, God, I know, I know I'm a sinner. I know that Jesus died on, my, on the cross for my sins. And I know that you're in control. And God, today, this morning, I just want to give my life to you. I don't want my things to be what keep me from coming to you. I want to give control to you. I want you to take my life so I can live for you. If that is you today, you've never done that before, if that is you today, will you raise your hand right now? If that is you today, will you raise your hand right now? Okay, thank you. Thank you, I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? I see you, thank you. Anybody else? I see you right here, thank you. Thank you. If you raised your hand, do me, nobody's looking around. If you raise your hand, look at me right now. Just those who raised your hand, look at me right now. Look at me right now. If you raised your hand this morning, I want to tell you something. You have an opportunity to start a relationship with the creator of the universe who wants to give you life freely. It's nothing you, it's nothing you can earn. It's just a free gift because God loves us. So I'm going to say a prayer. And here, just where you're sitting right now, where you're sitting right now, just right where you're at, say this with me. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner, and I know you died for me. It's hard for me to give up control, but I ask in this moment, God, that you take my life, become my Savior and my God. I give it to you.